Well, we had our meetings this morning and uh, reviewed the film with the, the players and uh, made the corrections that we need to make and then try to apply them going forward. And we're looking at Utah now and uh, working on that game plan. They are a uh, very good physical football team, both, both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, the guys that stand out to you, really their defense. I mean, they play physical, they play hard. Uh, you know, Lotulele, their nose tackle is one of the best defensive linemen I think I've seen in a long, long time. I mean, he's just a force. He uh, plays on the other side of the line of scrimmage. He's got great lateral quickness. Uh, you know, he's unbelievable off the snap in terms of his explosiveness. And then they've got a defensive end here, Timmy Palapoy, is I believe how you how you pronounce it, and he's the same type of guy. I mean, he's explosive. These are guys that will be, I think, forces at the next level. So uh, we've got our work cut out for us with those guys. And then offensively, it's probably the deepest group of receivers that we've seen. Uh, they've just got a bunch of guys that can make plays. Um, they're all efficient doing what they do, and it will be a tough task. And we, we saw how they played USC the other night. Uh, aggressive, up the field, uh, physical defense. So this will be uh, this will be a good challenge for us, especially up front. You know, with our young offensive line going against these guys, it'll be a real a real challenge. So we got to have a good week of practice, stay focused, and, uh, and come out and play as well as we can. Before we get to that, since I have direct TV and I couldn't see your game um, this last Saturday. I started off with uh, your school newspaper here, Sam Strong. Sam here? He wrote a column this morning, apparently. He says, when Moore is pressed for an answer in an, in an interview, he always falls back on the three pillars he hopes to kickstart this program on. Discipline, accountability, and toughness. None of them showed up on Saturday. Is that true? You know, Saturday night we played, when I looked at the film, the thing that I was impressed with was that we played hard. But you should play hard. I mean, that should be a given. It's given, right? The thing that we struggled with on Saturday night is we just we made mistakes. You know, we had a couple of uh, breakdowns in terms of our assignment. Um, we had a couple more penalties. Uh, we had we've had some penalties. We had penalties that were a little more critical showed up, and so uh, I would say that it's inaccurate in terms of toughness. We did play with toughness. Uh, I would question the discipline just because of the, the penalties. I think penalties can be an indicator of, of discipline. But I don't think we're an undisciplined team. I think we just made some mistakes. Uh, and our guys are accountable to each other. They're accountable to each other. You know, there was nobody in that locker room afterwards that was taking it lightly. You know, they were, they were affected by the loss. You know, just like they were affected by the loss against Oregon State. It's unique to me because I haven't been in a college locker room after a loss. And so, you know, when you're dealing with a younger athlete, I was interested to see how they reacted. And uh, they, they were very serious about it, you know. They were affected by it. And then well, they came you, back You would day. expect that. I mean, well, I would think, but I didn't, I didn't necessarily know how to, what to expect because I hadn't dealt with this age. And expect that around you, given so. the, the, the lay of the land right now so far, and how you growl. And Things don't necessarily go right. I, I can't. I don't know about that. Uh, since I didn't see the game again, um, look at the box score. I, I was curious. Did that field goal, when you went for the field goal to start the fourth quarter, you're down 15, so instead you make it down 12. Did that take kind of the air out of your team? Um, I don't follow you. Instead of going for it. I think you had third and six. You were in a, in a game where you couldn't quite catch up with them. You're down by 15 to start the fourth quarter. You go for the field goal instead of trying to go for it at that point. Oh, yeah, there's 14-31 left in the game, mm -hmm. the third and six. No, we want to get within two touchdowns, 12 points. There's a lot of game left to be played. You know, 14 I think it was 14-31 left in the fourth quarter. That's a time when you typically would go for a field goal. So you don't think it had any impact on how the rest of the fourth quarter went for your team? No. Okay. How about the end of the fourth quarter? Did your team quit on you? No, absolutely not. Not a chance. So what happened to, at the end of the game, the two scores by Cal, that game got away from you? The score got away from us a little bit, but nobody quit. No, we, uh, the long run, we busted the, the uh, defense. 
we, we made a mistake in our call, but nobody quit. You know, not even close. Coach, can you expand on discipline and mistakes? It's kind of sometimes a fine line. You've always preached this discipline, but penalties didn't cost you earlier a time in the year, and it seems like they cost you Saturday. They did. They did cost us Saturday. They affected us more Saturday. I think there's a distinction between discipline and penalties. You know, I mean, an undisciplined team is a team that shows up late for meetings or practice or doesn't pay attention or forgets their books or, you know, lets the little things slip. I think penalties, uh, some of the penalties the other day, you could certainly say a lack of focus. You know, when you have a false start and you jump off sides, to me that's a lack of focus. Some of the penalties are a function of playing against a good player who maybe got one on you on a play and so you react and, and grab and hold. Or maybe not put yourself in the right position in terms of your body on the field to make a block and so you reach and you hold. So I don't know necessarily that those are discipline issues as opposed to sometimes ability issues or you know not getting in the right technique issues. But there are focus penalties uh, and decision making penalties that you know that we've always got to address. Did you realize your secondary was as shaky as it is and struggling against really a team that isn't known for having great quarterback play? You talking about this past week? Yeah we, we had we didn't play as well as we are capable of playing in the secondary on Saturday. So and why not? Well, we just <laughs> their quarterback got hot. You know, we put pressure on him. He made throws. Uh, we got beat to our leverage a couple times by a really good receiver, uh, Keenan Allen. And uh, you know, it's it's competitive sports, and you guys have all covered competitive sports. You know, the other guys are are good players too, and you've got to be on it. You've got to do everything right on every player. You have the opportunity to get beat. But isn't it disappointing when you go against a team like that that basically only win is against Southern Utah? Did I got that right, Chris? Um, and that's as good as they've been so far, and you get waxed like you did? We knew going in and looking at the film, you know, the film sometimes tells a different story than a, than a score. And we knew going in that this was a very talented football team. They have a lot of talented football players. They just hadn't been able to put it together for a game. They played some some pretty good teams. You know, I think we'd all agree that, that USC is a good team. I think we'd all agree that uh, that Ohio State's a good team. And I've been able to see Arizona State play three or four times now on film, and I think they're a talented football team. And you know, we got in a situation on Saturday night where we were playing a team with a lot of talent that finally put it together. And uh, you know, we. We got to be pretty soundly, obviously. Do you know what kind of team you have? Are you talented? We have talent. Yes, we are a talented team. We're a very young team offensively, and so we're fighting through some growing pains. You know, we have uh, we have three freshmen starting on the offensive line. We have a sophomore starting on the offensive line. We have a freshman quarterback. We have a freshman slot, and then because of injury, Jordan Payton went in and played a ton. Who's a young guy, and I'm excited about these guys because I think they've got a lot of talent and they've got the right mindset. But there's going to be some bumps along the way, you know, when you're playing this many young guys. I've been through that before when I was coaching at uh, San Francisco. I believe we started a couple games, seven or eight rookies on our defense. We took some lumps for a little while, but as they they were talented guys, they were really talented guys. A number of them ended up, you know, going to Pro Bowls and things. Uh, as they grew together, as they played more. You saw fewer and fewer mistakes, you saw confidence grow, and they became a really good defensive team. And so I think we're going through a little bit of that on offense. And uh, You're always going to have young teams in college. You're going to have seven and eight-year pros. Yeah I, yeah, I don't know that you're going to always have, you know, we start at six freshmen. You know, we hope that we can get past that point where we're starting six freshmen. We hope that, you know, next year these six freshmen will be sophomores and they'll have like, games. Would you like to tell recruits you started six freshmen to show them that they get a chance to play? Yeah, it's great to be able to do that. Okay. You'd love to be able to show recruits that they have, they have an opportunity to come in and play. Jim, you, you mentioned uh, just a minute ago about the, the mindset as a, uh, being in the NFL and seeing a, a young student athlete lose for the first time. Six games in now as head coach here, Looking within, how are you a different coach? How do you have to be a different coach six games in compared to six games into the NFL after a loss? 
and how um, the kids process? That's a great question. And much more patient, much more observant uh, of all the other things that are going on in their lives that may affect how they play on Saturday. And not let it become an excuse, but not crushing them for it either. You know, trying to help them grow up, trying to help them, you know, maneuver through some adversity and, and learn how to be resilient. Uh, it's a real challenge and it's, it's, it's a learning experience. It's something I really enjoy. I'm certainly not, you know, I'm trying to get better at it every day. You know, I'm not an old seasoned vet when it comes to this, but I'm doing my best to, uh, to help these kids learn how to overcome some of these things that happen. I think there's some great life lessons to be learned here. You know, this is college football still. You know, these are still young, developing kids. So it's a responsibility I take pretty seriously, but by no means am I, you know, good at it yet. I'm just trying. Jim, you feel you mentioned pressure on Mayer. Did you feel you got adequate pressure on the quarterback to help out the secondary? <clears throat> yeah, we had five sacks. I mean, we were credited with three, but we had five. They, they'll end up giving Anthony Barr another sack and Stan McCann. We hit him numerous times. But he, he was 25 to 30. And that kid, you know, I, I, after games, it's typical for me to shake the hand of the head coach and then get to our locker room as fast as I can because I like to see our players coming off the field, win or lose, and just be standing in there when they come in and just, you know, give them a handshake. Uh, after that game on Saturday, after I got a chance to shake Coach Tedford's hand, I made it a point of trying to find Zach Maynard and just tell him that, I mean, that was an impressive, for me, that was an impressive performance because he got hit. And when you look at the film, when a guy like Oa hits you going full speed and knocks you down, and you, you know, he's not a big guy, he's a skinny legged guy, but he just kept getting up and going and going. So I, I made it a point to go tell him how impressed I was with him. He was, he was a tough sucker. So, I mean, you felt you got the pressure that, that for the coverage. Were the, you guys feel like the calls were right at, you know, for the, the coverage? Well, like I, like I mentioned yesterday when we were on our conference call, I didn't give you a good example. There was a call down in the red zone. And this is where I think I did a poor job. Uh, and we call it blitz, okay? And know that every call goes through my headset. So, and I know every call, offense, defense, special team. And, and Lou and I talked constantly through the game, constantly. And I saw where they had recognized the blitz, and you know how they, everyone looks to the sideline, and they changed the play. And my instinct was to, to call timeout and get us in a better call. And uh, I didn't do it. And so when I was talking about failing to help the players, that's what I was talking about right there, a play like that. I've had that happen to me once before. It was in a playoff game with, against Brett Favre in, uh, in San Francisco. Same thing, called the blitz, had a bad feeling about it, didn't call timeout, they scored a touchdown. We fortunately came back to win. But you know, those moments haunt you for a long, long time. Because part of your job as a coach is to help your players have success on the field by putting them in the right situation. When you don't do that and they look bad, it's, a, it's not a good feeling. So that would be better than that. Aren't you supposed to learn from your mistakes? Yeah, that was a long time ago. I must have. Hopefully, I've learned from them, but uh, you know how that is. It's, it's a constant battle. At least it is for me. Overall, though, you felt that the defensive calls, especially the calls, were great. The calls were good. Yeah, and in, in, in going, here's what happened, Chris. In, in like I said last night, like, I was surprised when I turned on the film at how hard we played on defense because when you look at the score, you got it must not have played very hard. The, the, the guys played hard. We busted about four plays that just made it look really bad. Plus, we were overcoming six turnovers, you know. And when you get, Bobby and I were talking about this yesterday, when you get a run on you like we did at the end of the game, was it 68 yards, whatever the touchdown, you know, conventional wisdom is, you know, you ask a question like, like you asked, did they quit? You know, because that's what it appears to be, you know, to everyone watching it on TV or you know, sitting in the stands, it's like, oh God, they gave up a 68 yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter, they must have quit. But the reality of it was is that we rotated, we busted the coverage. And so they had to just, we didn't have anybody in two gaps. You know, we rotated the wrong way. So uh, it looks bad, you know, but we didn't quit. 
What about the offensive play calling? And Jonathan only had 15 carries, but he seemed to be pretty effective. Do you think he, he kind of... He got 100 yards in the first half, I think, right? Rushing. Close. Yeah. He got, you know, he got dinged up. He got a uh, quad contusion. He got a calf contusion. So in the second half, he was pretty limited in the number of plays we could get. Plus, his hand was bruised. So he was fighting through it, and we were moving him in and out. Jordan James was doing some good things for us. Um, David Thigpen you know, didn't get as involved as he usually does. But a lot of the second half production with, with uh, Jonathan had to do with his you know, being banged up, um, playing from behind, throwing the ball more down the field, things like that. He should be. You know, he might miss practice tomorrow. It's the time of the season when you're a running back that you start to feel the hits. You know. Fuller going to remain a wide receiver for now. Say that again. Fuller going to remain a wide receiver. He is. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna use the. I mean, you guys saw we used him the other night. Uh, we're gonna use him more and more. With Darius's situation being uncertain right now, he'll get some time at that Y position, as we call it. It's essentially a receiver position. Um, talk to him, talk to his dad about his future. When we get to spring, he'll go back and, and compete at quarterback. But he's a really good athlete, and he can do some special things with his hands on the ball. And we started to really notice it. See, on scout team, you guys watch it, on scout team, we'll put him at receiver sometimes, you know, or even running back. Kind of, put him at the position where their most explosive player is and he just he showed up in practice. So uh, talk to him, talk to his dad about, you know, taking the red shirt off and getting him plays. And our goal is to get him 20 plays a game. And now with Dar like I said with Darius and Devin, and he's gonna factor in there more. We're excited to see what he can do. I don't know if we'll list him as a white do we list him as a white out, Steve, or we'll we might still list him as a quarterback, but he's been assured that he'll get a chance to go back and compete at quarterback in the spring. Are you worried this takes you out of the national championship picture now? <laughs> We're just worried about Utah right now, man. This is a huge challenge, Utah. So uh, you saw him play USC; they didn't look that good. You know, got a couple breaks early. I thought I thought they looked pretty good defensively. You know, I mean they uh, they get after it, and then when you watch the film. That front is impressive. I'd heard about, I got to look down to pronounce his name, Lotulele. I'd heard about him, but I'd never seen him play. I saw him play, you know, on TV. And then when I turned on the film the other day, you want to turn it off after about 10 plays. You know, he was a force. So uh, we've got to figure out how to deal with him. You're a touchdown favorite. I've never been one to pay attention to the, uh, to the, to the line. What point are you going to have to think about using somebody other than Fairburn for longer field goals? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, the problem is I don't know if we have anyone to use for longer field goals. And once again, I'm trying to, I'm trying to help this kid develop by putting him in positions where he can succeed and not fail. And uh, you know, I wanted to make field goals and I want to feel confident that he can go out and make, was it 46 yard or 42 yard? 43. You know, you asked about the, the field goal in the fourth quarter. If I would question one of my calls for a field goal, it would be the 43 yard. You know, because he hasn't necessarily shown in competition that he's ready to do that. He doesn't practice all the time. So right when he missed that, I went, you know, you're a dummy. You know, just go for it. Get this kid some chip shots as he grows up. He's going to be a great kicker. He really is, because he works at it. He's got the right mindset. Uh, Jeff Locke is helping him come along, and I'm just trying not to screw him up. So I think he's going to be a really good one. But I, to answer your question, because I don't know that we have a better option right now. So well, you just have to manage things the right way. You had Jeff Locke who hit 49 and 51 last year against yeah. Texas. Yeah. He just doesn't seem to be as comfortable doing that. Maybe I'll talk to him about it. Any of the, uh, the offensive line players talk to you about stemming? The Utah players like to do this thing where they stem? Yeah. yeah, where they shift right before the snap. Yeah. They, they got a call for I think, five or six false starts last year against Utah. Who did? Uh, UCLA did? Yeah. I mean, is that something that you've got to practice against? 
Yeah, I mean, we'll practice in our scout team stuff. We'll have our scout team guys do that. Probably have them jump across the line a little bit. Try to put pressure on. I mean, that's what you try to do during the week is you try to put pressure on them so that they're prepared for it. Have you seen that on the Yeah, yeah. They, what they'll do is they'll line up in a, like an, either an over and under front, and then right before they snap, they'll either shift back to their 3 4 alignment or shift from an over to an under, you know, or from an over and under back to a 3 4. Just move around. And uh, they're not trying to draw you off sides. I mean, they're not, they're not breaking the rules. What they're trying to do is, is confuse your blocking patterns, you know, make you make calls on the move. And they're good at it, you know, they're veterans and they, they time it up well. We have to do a good job of, of utilizing the cadence. And I think Brett will do a good job of that. You know, we've got to vary when we snap the ball. I think we can vary when we snap the ball, but that'll help us. And then we've got to have the poise and not jump to hang in there, you know. Is Utah better at it than other teams? Mm, I think that they just do it more. You know, um, it's not something that you necessarily see a lot of in college football. You know, you see more teams just kind of line up and, and go. Now they might stunt once the ball snap, you know, runs. So we were struggling the other night with some what we call TE games, where tackle up, end under. Uh, but in terms of the pre-snap movement, you don't you don't see a ton of that. But Utah, another veteran group. Noel said after the game that he was looking for the right five guys on that offensive line. Um, even with Torian healthy, are you still kind of looking to put guys there? Or? I think it's important that you always are looking to upgrade your team and create competition and you know uh, push guys to be the best they can be. And so, you know, if we can if we can find a better combination, then you know we'll find it. I think that this is a pretty good combination, very young, a lot of room for growth, you know, struggle sometimes, but a group that I'm excited about watching develop, you know. Um, but we're going to try to win the game we're playing. You know, we're not going to sacrifice a game for experience. And I don't think we have, you know. We're playing the young guys because they're, they're our best options right now. You know, I don't think it would be fair to got a Jeff Bach and say, well, we're going to develop these young guys at the expense of his senior season. We're not doing that. These are, these are our best options right now, and we like them a lot. And they're going to be really good players. They're just young. And with youth, sometimes comes mistakes. And if they come at the wrong time, they kill you. But we can't use it as an excuse either. You know, they've got to grow up, and we got to help them. We good? Okay. Thank you.